the door and insert your room key in, allows you to turn on your lights. Lesson 1.1, do not leave that key card in the slot with your laptop with your dongle and remote in it four minutes before you're supposed to be running on your attention. Just as a curiosity, I got I, 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 well, a hypothetical, of course. The first time I've now, if, this story. if you two would please talk for the next five to eight minutes while I lower my heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's going to be okay. Um, well, well, machine. <laughs> I, uh, I confess, I was, uh, when, <laughs> when I went to my room, I spent a couple of minutes like, oh great, the lights are broken. <laughs> My Don't name. they know who I am? <laughs> I'm in a room with broken lights. So typical. <laughs> the only on the way out of the room did I see the slide. I was like, oh, it's one of those. The best part was when you stomped out and said, I want to speak to the man in charge. <laughs> we have been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> so uh, we have a relatively brief, brief slideshow of sort of the basics of Joko Cruise that we will run through as excuse me, efficiently as possible. And for the rest of the time, we're happy to open it up to questions about how the cruise works or um, worries that we may assuage and such. But first of all, again, thank you so much for joining us, for trusting us, for living through the last three weeks with us and making it here. We thank you very much. Our motto for about the past few weeks has been just get us on the boat. <laughs> We're in here. We did it. Um, so if that's it for water, we can move to the sides a little bit. So that everyone can see. I will press the button on this remote that I sprinted several hundred yards to retrieve. Even though the laptop is right here, and I can push a button on it. The event is built around 
our many shows and events. Uh, each, almost every night is anchored, if you will, around our main concerts, which take place in this room, the early and late shows, which flip-flop with your dinner seating times. We also have a whole bunch of other official events uh, being presented by our various performers, writers, and other guests. Uh, beyond all of that, there's a thing that has become to be known as the Shadow Cruise, which is the stuff that you all do. On the first Joko cruise, uh, on the ship we were on, we essentially had a very large conference center area within the ship that we were using part of, uh, and we had all of it set aside for us, and our people just started spontaneously planning events. They brought a bunch of their own games, and people did a little dance lesson thing, or iPhones were brand new at the time. Some folks said, can we do an iPhone handbell choir? And we said, yeah. And we very quickly realized, why should we work to program an entire week <laughs> when you all will do it for us and pay us for the privilege? <laughs> As such, we set aside a great amount of our uh, schedule, uh, venues and times, uh, for you all to self-organize events, which you have done with abandon this year. And you can see all of these events listed uh, on the online Joko Cruise schedule, which is at that website right there, you do not need to pay for the internet to access that site. It is whitelisted. That's a technical term, I guess. Uh, you, can, you just need to connect to the ship's Wi-Fi, and that is one of the websites you can access. It will be always updated uh, should any changes come around. Also, we have schedules posted throughout the ship, especially in every um, elevator bank that have the full day schedule. We have digital signage throughout the ship that's also displaying, and also each morning, or I should say the night before, you receive the next day's newsletter, which will also include that day's uh, schedule for you. A note about uh, online and SCAD, this will work for you. We know that there are some apps that have been developed and they're amazing, but we cannot guarantee, depending on the technology, they will always work. So know that these are the things that should always work. Oh, the other thing I will mention, um, I do not know if they have yet fixed it. You are able to download the contents of SCED into your mobile device app, to your iCal and such. Sometimes, however, there have been issues because SCED is built for events that take place in one place <laughs> and don't move around, and there's a time change during this cruise, and it may or may not cause discrepancies. So always the online version at that website is the authoritative. Those times are uh, what they are. And we should also say that um, all times expressed in the schedule happen on ship time, which technically is whatever time the captain decides it is on the ship. <laughs> Usually that coincides with whatever time zone we're in. So sometimes the captain says it's gonna be 5.37 all day today. <laughs> Sometimes the captain says it's 420 all day. <laughs> that captain does not keep his job very long. <laughs> Sometimes the captain says it's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> and they miss fence to the left and fence to the right. Um, this year we only have one time change that coincides with daylight saving time. It's very late tonight, or if you will, very early tomorrow at 2 a.m. Clocks move forward to 3 a.m. on the ship, which means our schedule moves forward to 3 a.m. That time stays for the duration of our trip. Dominican Republic is in a different time zone, but they do not observe daylight saving time, so our time coincides. There's no changes necessary. There are some times we do this trip, and there's like five time changes with only three port stops somehow. Guys, running a cruise is so hard. It's really good. I don't know what we were thinking. Five time changes and two port stops is my Rush cover band. Um, again, as I mentioned, there are uh, early and late dinners and shows. The red team, who's on the red team here, goes to the early dinner, which today is 5.30, on all other days is 5, and then goes to the late show, which tonight is 8, on all other days is 7.30. Gold team, where's my gold team members at? He loves them some late dinner in <laughs> You flip-flop, you come to the early show and you're at the late dinner. Your lanyard will indicate which team you're on. You should wear it for, for any main concert you attend. That is your badge to get in for, for that show. Um, if you wish to attend the other 
showing of the main concert uh, and you're not on that team, it's okay as long as there are seats available after the show starts. But we wait to at least first make sure that all of the people for that team uh, have gotten their seats before we can let other people in. Uh, we will also note on days four and five, which is the Santa Domingo Land concert day the day after, there's um, well, the Santa Domingo Land concert the first night, and there's no main show the next night. So dinner those nights is just open night, which means any time between five and nine, you can just go in uh, and have dinner. <coughs> Excuse me. They do ask that you try and show up relatively around uh, the time of your dinner seating, so we don't have 2,000 people show up at 5 p.m. Uh, and you are also, oh, we should make it clear, you are not obligated to go to the main dining room. There are, as you've probably been able to tell in your time around the ship, multiple options of food uh, uh, everywhere, pretty much. And, and the food is pretty great everywhere on Hall of America Line. Uh, the main theater shows, in fact, every event other than this one, I think, and possibly even this one, is simulcast on your in-room TVs. And also the main, uh, all of the events happening in this room, and also the morning show that happens in BD Kings each morning, will be recorded and reloaded onto the ship's uh, on-demand system the next day sometime. So that if you miss a show, you can go back and watch it, or if you just don't feel like coming to the theater, you can watch the simulcast from your room. Uh, it's also being rebrought, it's being simulcast also in BB King's Lounge. Uh, so you have multiple options uh, for viewing any of the main shows. We do have a policy of clearing out the room after each main show. Um, uh, that is up to the discretion of our helper monkeys who are banging the doors, whether or not to wave that. Depends on how many people are waiting to come into the next show. Um, fair to everyone. We try to end each main show early enough uh, that you'd be able to get back in for whatever's happening the next night. Like, for example, after the main shows is uh, the Adventure Zone, we'll show you that coming up. But we do have a default policy of clearing the rooms. Uh, there is uh, some, is anyone here in Club SRO? Then you know who you are. These are people who have elected to not have a guaranteed seat during either of the main theater scenes. Uh, you're welcome to watch the simulcast of BB Kings or from your room. And again, if there are seats available once the show starts, you'll have the opportunity to come sit down. Uh, that said, all are welcome to view those simulcasts as well in BB Kings. It's not exclusive. On Tuesday, March 10th, uh, we have a land concert in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Uh, you should have received in your email and also in the booklets that everybody received, there's a map of the location of the plaza where the um, uh, performance is happening. It is about, depending on your pace, I'd say an eight to 10 minute walk from the door of the terminal to the plaza itself. It's very nearby. As a, there's some steps to go up. It's, it's not a flat walk, but it's a, a relatively short walk. 4 p.m., uh, access to the plaza uh, will be made, he said in a weird passive tense or something. So <laughs> there will have been access granted. Uh, at 4 p.m., there will be food stations uh, and drink uh, and bars there on the plaza where you can purchase those things if you want. There's, those sales will be through, via tickets only, which you can buy on site using U.S. cash or a Visa or a MasterCard. So when you actually you buy the tickets and you actually hand those to the people running the food stations, uh, and they will, if, if you need change for it, they will hand you change in food tickets. All the foods will be in denominations of 250 or two dollars fifty cents. So you won't, you can't get change back. They're non-refundable. So um, don't expect that. Fine. <laughs> yeah, those of you who are planning to make a lot, of yeah, money right. I'm gonna do through some weird math scheme. But yeah, I got all this Joko Cruz script that I'm gonna exchange. <laughs> uh, at five p.m. the concert begins, and then we run until. Uh oh. Uh, at five p.m. the concert starts, and will run until approximately ten thirty. Uh, you will then have the ship departs at 1 a.m. Everybody has to be back on board half an hour before our departure time in each port of call. So you need to be back on board by 12:30 in the morning. Once again, your badge and your lanyard will serve as your ticket to get into that event. Uh, the, the security on site will be going to look for those things. Um, uh, there will be seating available. It's designed as a stand-up rock show, but further back by the sound booth and further back there will be seats. Uh, there will also be accessible seating both near the stage and further back by the, the sound booth designed for those uh, who need it. Um, 
We won't make the official call until Sunday when we have to. It is looking right now like it is going to rain in Santo Domingo. <laughs> Who was on one board last year? Yeah. You know, you know what we're this year we have a rain plan. <laughs> we have two, yes, we have multiple rain plans. This one that we will likely invoke is there going to be a large 2,000 person tent erected to shelter us all from the rain. Um, but hopefully uh, it won't happen. But we'll be in the tent anyway. So you know, it's like having a sleepover in the backyard just to. 2,000 of our best friends. <laughs> that is the map uh, previously referred to that shows you the general walking path. Uh, we will note this big road here between the ship uh, and the rest of Santa Domingo is a relatively busy road. There will be authorities on site to help people cross that road. Um, and also, uh, in the roughly hour before the concert starts, and roughly an hour to hour and a half after the concert ends, they'll be closing that road to traffic for us. It is a pretty busy road, so if, as you are crossing it, even if you are being uh, uh, helped and escorted, take care with it. Um, we don't want... Uh, I don't even finish the sentence. <laughs> also, this is not a photo, so don't be confused. The road is not purple. <laughs> the trees are not perfectly round. There will also not be a big sign that says food station above the food station. Oh, no, no, that will be there. <laughs> the tent, it will be there. It's pictured here. It is an invisible tent. And all the restaurants are called restaurants. <laughs> uh, we have enough. Today is Welcome to Monkey's Day. So welcome to Monkey's Day. designed to help ease you into the process, including a new monkey karaoke, karaoke happening after the late show. There's a new monkey dance party at BB King's following that. There's a bar crawl happening this evening. Uh, you can find out information about it. They're going to visit four different bars on the ship. You can find all sorts of events again on the, on the schedule. And uh, we thank you again for putting your trust in us as a new monkey. We guarantee you're going to have a good time. Void your privilege. If you need help, uh, do we have any helper monkeys here in the room with us right now? We have a number of people who, over the course of the week, are granting us some of their time to help out, out others. Uh, helper monkeys will be, for example, uh, working the doors and, and helping guide people in the entrances and exits and such. Uh, the helper monkeys, I always forget how this works, the helper monkeys are wearing all pink. Uh, sashes, sashes, yes. Helper monkeys will be wearing pink sashes. We also have a number of new monkey ambassadors who will be wearing pink vests. They are basically walking information booths. Uh, if you have a question about a thing that's not a hyper-specific, uh, please replace the key to my room. It doesn't work type question. They're happy to help out. Uh, yeah, it's, okay. Basically, if it's Joko stuff, you see a helper monkey. If it's ship type stuff, like your room key, Go to the ship's uh, guest services desk, which is in the atrium on deck one. We also have a Joko help desk, so if it's things like my Twitter code won't work, uh, and, and any questions like that, we have an info desk that is on the other side of the atrium across from the guest services desk. Uh, the code of conduct. We greatly hope that this will not be an issue at all this week. Nonetheless, we take very seriously the safety and security and well-being of all of our attendees. Uh, our code of conduct is posted in numerous places. It is in our blue book. We have emailed it to you. It is on our website. Uh, if you feel you have been either the subject to some form of harassment or other violation of the code of conduct, or if you witness what you believe might be a violation, uh, there are numerous uh, things you can do to report that, you can call uh, from any ship phone, 74701. We have uh, anonymous report forms. If you would like, prefer to fill something out anonymously, you can pick one up at the info desk. You can contact any helper monkey or staff, or particularly uh, if you're concerned for your safety. Uh, please do not hesitate uh, to speak to one of them. Also, we have a dedicated, uh, for lack of a better term, ship listener. Colin Adamo, are you here? This is Colin. He is... He is our front person on all issues of code of conduct this week. Uh, he is also holding uh, several sessions of office hours. If you just would like to 
talk to someone or have questions about how these things work, he will be available to you during those office hours and just generally throughout the week. So please don't hesitate uh, to get in touch. Uh, there is a great deal of tabletop gaming happening on this ship. The gaming library uh, is in the upper dining room on deck three. They are, uh, there were a little bit of cargo delays, so it's taking a little while to get it up and running. It uh, was scheduled to open at five, I believe. Yeah. Right. They're still working hard on it. They may have to delay the opening of it, but there is a game lending library and a whole bunch of staff who are like, happy to help you out choosing and or checking in or out a game. Yeah, by the chance is Jen Ellis, who puts together a program here, she would know for sure. No. Because she's busy putting together the program. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but that will be there all week long. Uh, the entire dining room is dedicated to gaming or is open to gaming except during the dinner hours. We have them clear all the tables and everything except for the table numbers. Uh, and while there are a few other events happening in there otherwise, if the table is open, uh, you should be welcome. And if it's not reserved for some sort of event, you're welcome to game there. We're still working out a plan to have like a meal that is a game, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Uh, you also, there's also a great deal of tables in the Lido Market, up on uh, the buffet area, up on Deck 9. Also, everywhere else on the ship that is a flat surface or even an angled surface, you could probably try and succeed at gaming at. Uh, there's also electronic gaming here, uh, up on Deck 11, forward, directly above us, in the EXC Center, uh, is a whole bunch of console games, uh, classic and current. Uh, that they are setting up, if not already set up. Yeah. Uh, we also, uh, with, under the charge of our good friend Storm, but with all of our enthusiastic support, have an old school uh, arcade set up in Billboard on Board. It was a big hit last year, it's a bigger hit this year. Uh, that's open 24-7, uh, and it's free, although if you want to put some quarters in, we'll take them. <laughs> Tiny note about that, there's one of the arcade games, I believe it's the Dick Dug, that we actually need to load quarters onto it by reaching into the machine. If the Dick Dug is not putting up credits, we'll get around to it. I know there are a lot of Dick Dug fans on the ship tonight. I <laughs> wanted to make sure it wasn't Dick Dug frustration. <laughs> Dick Dug frustration is my Devo cover band, I don't know. There is a, a room dedicated entirely to crafting. Where are my crafters at? Uh, you'll find it listed on maps as the Microsoft Workshop. It's the place where they have a bunch of computers set up to teach the usual clientele on a cruise ship how to send emails to their grandchildren. However, the precedent is the Microsoft room. All the crafts will be based around Clinton. <laughs> They have cleared out all of the computers. The tables uh, have been laid with butcher paper. Uh, and that is on deck three after a whole number of events uh, being organized by Christine Fellows and the folks at uh, Fiona's Fineries. Uh, also, there are many crafters on board. There's knitting groups. There's all sorts of shadow events, I believe, with different meetups and such. You'll find them scattered throughout the ship. Uh, we do have a couple of quiet zones for those who need a place to be that is not in their cabin, but is uh, free of extraneous noise and interaction to the extent that it is possible on this ship. Thank the, you. you are very welcome. Shh. <laughs> uh, in the crow's nest, also referred to as 10 forward, which inconveniently on this ship is on deck 11, <laughs> from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. every day, except for one day it has to close a half hour early. Um, that is also the room where the ship's uh, coffee uh, station is. Uh, you are still welcome, of course, to come in and order coffee. We do ask when you do so to mind the fact that it is being also used as a quiet area, so please try not to linger and be too loud as you order um, and just you know, respect the space for people are using it. To clarify, there's coffee available in plenty of places. Oh, yes. That's the place with the espresso machine. Yes, that's more of uh, And then, yeah, so, so for example, when you're up there at the espresso machine, don't go, woo! You gotta walk because the express is really good. <laughs> and then the starboard side, which means if you are facing the front of the ship, the right side of the ship in the Lido Market, that is the, the buffet area, after 9.30 p.m., we also ask uh, that you reserve that for quieter activities. There's plenty of space elsewhere. This is the side, by the way, if you need another point of reference, the Canaletto Restaurant is on that side. 
Um, we spoke a little bit about the Shadow Cruise. It's this amazing, ridiculously wonderful thing that grew out of your collective enthusiasm. Uh, and one day it will take over the entire ship and we won't have to do anything. Um, it is run by uh, people who uh, just have enthusiasms for things and want to share them, and, and we welcome all of that. We do have, uh, as we mentioned in email, a default policy, unless the description says otherwise, uh, for Shadow Cruise events that any uh, attendees age 12 or under please be accompanied by a parent. The enforcement of that suggested guideline is up to the person running the event. We want to welcome all the sea, uh, sea monkeys that who want to attend it, but also we want to make sure the event is capable of managing the needs of everyone who is there. So we thank you for your cooperation with that. Um, we have a whole bunch of performers on the ship, slightly fewer than we had hoped. For those of you who had missed the announcements, uh, a number of performers were unable to make it this year. Uh, John Hodgman, Aww. Will Wheaton, Aww. Yoon Ha Lee, Aww. and Zoe Keating Aww. were unavailable to make it to the trip this year. We are very sad to miss them, and they are very sad not to be able to be here. Also, Liz Fair will be performing in the Santo Domingo concert, but will no longer be sailing with us on Joko Cruise. That said, all of our other performers are here, on board, varying degrees of healthy and ready. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> At the time of this writing, what's the legal things I'm supposed to put in? Um, all the performers are here. They are ready to have fun. There are a number of them having different types of office hours, which is sort of our term for they may have sort of small impromptu uh, lo-fi gatherings. Some of them are just drink up, some of them are Q&A. It's entirely up to them. A lot of them may get added during the week. We will add them to schedule and try and announce them as, as they happen. Um, uh, and they will, they're, they're fun to do. It's a great way to sort of meet a person who you may have wanted to meet. Uh, and regarding that, if you want to go ahead. Oh, no, I haven't much. Oh, I mean, um, the, we get questioned a lot, you know, can I ask someone for an autograph, for example? Of course you're welcome to ask for an autograph. Uh, please, of course, if you see a, a famous person you wish to approach, try and read the situation. Are they obviously trying to do some sort of private time? Are they with their family? Are they eating? Are they in their room sleeping? Um, <laughs> and a general thing, uh, people are often nervous. What do I say? An easy one is to, to approach when they appear approachable, not in the middle of dinner, etc., and say, Hi, ah, my name is Take Your Name. Do not say, Take My Name. Uh, I'm, I'm Vander. And then take, you can take your cues from them. So if they say a simple thank you and they're clearly busy, uh, but you can take your cues. Yeah, so you're welcome to approach someone. You're welcome to ask for an autograph. That's how we try not to foster an overly con type. Uh, atmosphere of we're all going to line up for nine hours for 20 seconds of interaction with the famous person. We do have a number of signings scheduled later in the week for that. Um, but, you know. As you'll discover, they're here all week. Yeah, they're here all week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you'll see them at the buffet line. Yeah. And, like, you know, you'll, hanging you'll, out by the pool. It's you'll, the, you'll be sharing a hand sanitizer station with them. That's right. <laughs> They'll be in line for Dick Doug. <laughs> the internet. Slow. It's slow. It's not as slow as it used to be. It's still friggin' slow. Uh, it, it, the, the internet packages are available on the ship. You can pay either for it. Bar, which you received email about. This is a Sea Monkey developed social media app or web portal. I don't know the words. It's a website you can connect to um, that does not require the internet. Again, you can just use the ship's Wi Fi. You are all emailed, at least in theory, codes that you need to use to sign up for TwitR. If you haven't gotten a code or if you want one, you can get one from the info desk. Uh, you can sign up for that. You can use it for uh, it's direct messaging, uh, the equivalent of tweeting, sharing media and such. And that's just sort of our onboard way of uh, ignoring the rest of the internet. Also, as previously mentioned, our online schedule on sked.com is available without having to use the internet. On the subject of internet, I just want to remind everybody when we actually start sailing, Remember to turn off your cellular. Oh, and also turn Mental off note. automatic updates. Right. So, do, it, when, and when you're connect, if you do in fact uh, get an internet plan, make sure you don't use it all up with an automatic backup one night when you plug in your phone. And also, 
on, I know on some of the plans, if you log out, it'll the meter will stop. I'm not sure exactly which plans. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the five free one rule, which we ourselves learned via Will Wheaton. I'm sure it originated somewhere else, but very important. Please remember the five free one rule. Five hours of sleep a night at minimum, three meals a day at minimum, and one shower or bath per day at minimum. Important. <laughs> Particularly important, these are not optional and they are not interchangeable numbers. You do not have five meals, and well, I guess you could. As long as you get eight of the above in some way, shape, or form. That's mine. Um, here's some data. This year we have, not counting dinners and happy hours and such, 382 programmed events for a total of 631 hours of things this week, including. 57 and a quarter hours of Shadow Cruise events for a grand total of 26.29 days worth of stuff packed into seven days. That is uh, almost an entire day more than last year. It's 0.83 uh, percent, or 83, oh, I don't know the math. There's a 0.83 in there. It's just one, one Kessel run. I'm a musician. I don't need math. Uh, now, for those of you who are worried about FOMO, the old fear of missing out, Obviously, you are not going to be able to attend all of these things. And you could look at these numbers and say, oh crap, I'm going to miss so many awesome things. But you could also look at these numbers from the flip side, which is entirely true. There is always going to be an awesome thing happening at pretty much any hour. And maybe I am not seeing all the awesome things, but I can always see an awesome thing. So please take faith in that and don't get discouraged. And also, again, while there's all this stuff happening, be sure to take time for yourself. It is okay if you wish to not get off the ship during a particular port of call. It is okay to take a nap instead of going and doing another thing. Take care of yourself, stay healthy, and stay comfortable. Um, you know, we want to, you know, we're as enthusiastic as you are about this stuff, but please be good to yourselves. And you are on a cruise. I mean, you're on a cruise. So if you want to sit in a chair in the sun and read a book, that's a perfectly reasonable way to spend an hour or more. Uh, now let's talk about the elephant in the room. This guy. Not this guy. This guy. <laughs> yeah, boo! Go away! <laughs> Worst virus ever. <laughs> Don't touch it, Storm! These annoying Christmas tree ornaments have been a source of frustration for all of us, particularly us on the stage for the past few weeks. That said, we are all here now, and now that we are all here, please bear the following items in mind. The ship is taking, the, as it is, the ship is always working very hard on cleaning and disinfecting everything. They have further enhanced procedures for all of our health and safety. They're, uh, and not to mention, numerous, as you have seen, hand sanitizer stations everywhere. And they're filled with the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the high test. Uh, wash your hands. We said it a lot. We'll keep saying it. Wash your hands. Don't wash your touch hands. your face. Do, do, do. Go wash your hands. Do, do, do. <laughs> Storm wrote a song. <laughs> Song. <laughs> um, as has been hammered into all of our heads through the major media, because it is the thing that is most effective. Wash your hands thoroughly. The advice is for 20 seconds, but not just 20 seconds, but 20 thorough seconds. Get all over your hands, the areas in between the fingers, yeah, on the backs of the hands, your nails. Do a good job. Wipe your hands with uh, a single-use towel. Uh, use that towel to open the door if you if you need to, and you're good. Also, and do not swallow the towel. Do not eat the towel. <laughs> do not rub the towel on your friend's face. <laughs> there are numerous hand sanitizers all over the ship. Most of you have hand sanitizer. To be clear, all high alcohol percentage hand sanitizers, which include the ones present on the ship here, are very effective at killing nor uh, coronavirus. Do not substitute a high alcohol drink. That is for internal use only. <laughs> uh, do not touch your face. I uh, hate this rule. I have a beard and I am compulsive, and every time someone says don't touch your face... My face is so itchy yeah, all the time. All, at all times. I didn't know, but it's apparently constantly itching. <laughs> but please do your best. 
Try and check each other. Don't touch your face. If you do touch your face, at least go back and wash your hands so you don't touch your face again with your filthy hands. If you see somebody touching their face, just go, FACE <laughs> FACE That will remind them not to do it. <laughs> That's a helpful tip from uh, your old pal Joko. Also, also there's this. There's also... Also this, I like this one too. Yeah. Uh, I know a number of people also been going going for this. You can do jazz hands. We don't care what you do. Jazz hands. Maybe fewer handshakes and hugs. Air hug. <laughs> Storm, let me blow you a hug. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we're this far no. apart. We're okay. Uh, if you have to sneeze or cough, it is best to sneeze or cough into a tissue and then throw that tissue out. Or if you do not have a tissue, the most effective place, as proven by the Mythbusters, in the crook of your elbow. Do not immediately use that elbow to touch with other people, particularly <laughs> hooking the inside of it where all the sneeze is. Wash your elbow at first opportunity. <laughs> Everybody take common sense steps. Please stay safe. Uh, we love you. Don't get sick. Don't make us sick. <laughs> and that is the extent of our PowerPoint. We have until uh, um, the safety... Uh, I was going to say patrol. It's not the safety patrol. Your safety drill. Your, your mandatory safety drill starts in roughly 15 to 17 minutes. If you have a question, we have a runner with a microphone. We will try and get to as many as we can, and, as quickly as we can. And one caveat, if you have questions that are sort of general, we have a management Q&A at the end of the week. So we'd like to just address sort of how we cruise, how we Joko cruise type questions, please. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Eve, and my partner Alexis and I made an escape room that we, uh, a portable escape room that we brought on. Buzz marketing, buzz marketing. You never paid us for this. So I am offering for tonight's escape room to new monkeys. There you go. New yeah. monkey escape room. So I, I have a sign-up sheet right here, and I will take the first eight people or I will give you if... Actually, why don't you... There, so there's uh, um, some counters up here at the top of the, the row, uh, the right side row here. Why don't you just have that sheet right up at that counter at the top of the stairs there? Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> and you have a pen, if not if someone has a pen. I've got a pen. Hello? <laughs> Hi there. I was just wondering if the land concert will also be filmed in on demand? That will not, unfortunately. Aww, sorry. <laughs> Hello, new monkey here. We're all excited. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Uh, where do we go for this uh, safety drill, anyway? Ah, they will be making announcements for your directions. The short version is, I believe, the first part is you go to your stateroom, and then when they announce, you go to your your assembly station on your key card. Has a number. Uh, it bottom says left. Assembly number. station. Bottom. Bottom left has a number. The even numbers are on the port side. The odd numbers are on the right side on deck three. They correspond with different uh, all the various different lifeboats on the ship. Yeah. So once you go down to deck three, you'll see signs directing. But they will give very thorough, uh, very thorough instructions over the ship's loudspeaker. Next Another question. question. So, I was wondering for events that happen in this room that aren't the main concert, is there somewhere that we line up? Should we line up? Uh, you can if you really wish. It for just the, doesn't seem to be a lot of room there. Right uh, there. Uh, there they will be doing line management. The helper monkeys will be helping direct line management up there as needed. It will essentially be outside of these two doors on deck two. Uh, it has been our experience so far for the most part. Lines have not been horrifically long for events. We know there are a couple that it might there might be greater anticipation for. Our helper monkeys are prepared for it. They will direct you as to where you should, should line up. Thank you. Wow. Okay, a question? Questions? Who's got the questions? There's one oh, over here, uh, too. We'll go up here first. Oh, up here? Yep. Yes, shout it. <laughs> we all know The question is, uh, we all know our phones are disgusting because they're touching our faces all the time, like we just asked you not to do. Is there any way to clean all the phones? If, if your phone is waterproof or water, water resistant, resistant in a way that makes you feel comfortable using water, you can uh, get some soapy uh, water on a, on a towel and, and use that to, to, to wipe your phone. Um, uh, from what I understand, uh, phones that have an oleophobic coating on the screen 
Uh, don't, if you put alcohol on them over time, that will uh, get rid of the oleophobic coating, so they don't always recommend using alcohol on a phone, but it depends on the kind of phone you have. But uh, soap and water, if you feel comfortable using, you know, don't like put it in the bathtub. But. And don't quote me on this, because I am not a doctor, but my, our understanding is, specifically for coronavirus, for example, it does not live on surfaces for terribly long. Um, I mean, you know, don't go licking doorknobs. <laughs> That's a general point of advice. <laughs> it is generally spread uh, through skin-on-skin -skin or bodily fluid contact uh, and on just regular inanimate surfaces. While it will last for a certain amount of time, I could not say how long that is. I believe it is more a matter of minutes or hours rather than weeks or days. So on that note, my name is Tim. Hi, Tim. I'm a, prof I'm a professor of virology. Yeah! Oh. Our new leader as our civilization collapses. <laughs> Lead us, O oh Tim. So I have two. I'm happy to talk with anybody anytime. Um, it's just ask me about. T viruses. Tonight's main concert has been replaced with Tim reassuring us all for two hours straight. <laughs> so here is my reassurance. I am here. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just what Big Virus wants us to think. <laughs> You're in the pocket of Corona. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Uh, any more questions, up or down? Back here. There's one up here as well. Uh, over here. Uh, let's see. Is he, uh, go ahead and shout yours out, and then we'll do this one over here next. Oh, well, uh, you can uh, use any uh, card. Our first uh, life hack. <laughs> You can just use any card. It's just a physical sensor. The truth is, any card, yeah, is any card in that slot will, will make your lights go on. So, yeah, that's true. And yeah. if you use a credit card in it, it will spit out $10 when you're moving. <laughs> hey there. Uh, you, uh, you emailed us the uh, Twitter codes a couple of days ago? Yes. I cannot access my email. Is there some place? Uh, you, you can always go to the info desk and request another code. It's not so much that you must use this single code, it's just everybody needs a unique code. Uh, the info desk should have either the one that was assigned to you or they'll be able to assign you a new one. Awesome, thanks. Also, if you went up to, if you go up to say deck nine or one of the outdoor decks, you should be able to recontact the internet until we've pulled away from the ship. All the way from the shore. We're not sure. Going. I'm sorry. I have revealed Please. one of the secret performer plan. Please do not pull away from the ship, no. particularly after we've departed. Yeah, because thank you. We have a very complicated code worked out among the performers. And when things are going bad, part of that code is triggered when uh, a virologist named Tim stands up <laughs> and addresses us. That's our little. That's our cue to hit the escape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was there a question over here? Uh, yeah. I. Did I touch my face? Yes. Face touch on me! Any questions? Some more? Oh, up top. Up top. Um, hello. First of all, thank you all for the carbon mitigation that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to speak very briefly to, to the, that program? For well, those like, who uh, my question um, uh, is if you could possibly whitelist everydayhero.com so if we're on the Joko page, we can continue to contribute to that while on the cruise. I believe um, they are working on that. Yeah, we're mentioned. looking into it. Not to give you a vague response like that, but that's literally the case as we are looking into it. Any others? Anyone else at all? Oh, way in the back there. Oh, yeah. So we if someone can repeat it forward to us. Oh, suggestion to share inside jokes. You mean, or to learn? Are you curious what some of the inside jokes are that you should know about? Or well, there you go. Now you're, you're hearing all these people shout these out. Those are inside or, jokes. Or we can oh, make one yes. out right now. We did this last year. This is super great. We need a phrase. Because that's a beautiful thing. There are inside jokes, but really, 
It's just fun to have them, but you don't have to know one, and we can create one right now. So, Paul, we need a good phrase. Now, let's leave it up to Jonathan. Okay. We need a good phrase that sounds like it's a reference of some sort. I mean, we, hey, hey, those of you who are there at the end of, uh, oh, you know what? Uh, Virologist Tim. Virologist Tim. <laughs> No, but or, the, the virologist Tim or Tim the virologist? Are you about to leave it to Tim? Is Tim still here? Oh, he's done. He That's ran it. off the ship. Oh, yeah. great. Here it is. Here's the news. Tim, Tim, the Tim the virologist has deserted us. <laughs> <laughs> or where's Tim? Yeah. Just referencing <laughs> Tim. Where's Tim? Friend so Tim. thank you. You have now created the latest inside joke. <laughs> And that said, again, sea monkeys are very friendly. If you hear a reference that you don't understand, feel free to ask them, what is that in reference to? Could well be they don't know, they just like repeating the joke. <laughs> More likely they will talk to you about it for one hour. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other questions? Here for you. Yes, as far as we know, we have we talked to him today. Jim Boja does have his voice. voice. Yeah, as, as of this writer. I mean, such as it is. Yeah. Oh! Wow, oh, shots fired. Oh. There was one up here somewhere? <laughs> yes, uh, right in the front there? Um, I haven't seen anything about uh, recycling uh, like rooms or is there any kind of recycling program? Question is, is there a, is there a recycling program? Um, not per se. I know that when they take everything off, they have a process for managing it. Honestly, we don't know in detail what it is, but I'm curious as heck now. Yeah, but I, I don't, I, they don't, it's not as if they have separate bins. If they do recycling, they separate it. Uh, All right, so here's the uh, voice of the gods. Oh, 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 I, will mention, I will mention this one real quick regarding that for uh, one small program at least. Uh, on the last day, I believe, we will have a swag swap table set up. Uh, there'll be an announcement as where that is. For the, you've received various promotional items and games and such. If you don't wish to take them off the ship with you and you don't want them just thrown away, you'll be able to place these things there for, so people who want extras can take them, and the ship will, will not be just tossing those. They'll take them and they're going to get recycled or reused somehow. Sorry guys for interrupting sure. really quick. There is an answer to that question. Your oh, station attendants will take care of your garbage, so don't worry about separation. And we do have full recycling center downstairs. Whee! The Thanks, more you God. know, yeah. You learn something new every year. Another question? Any chance for any behind-the-scenes story? Any behind-the-scenes story? Oh, touring of the ship? Yeah. You know, it's like Jonathan's room. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure if they're doing that. Yeah, the one person who would know whether it's happening this year or not is our fourth partner who's not here because he's yeah. busy running the cruise, Drew. Uh, I am honestly not sure. We we'll, we will talk to the the ship staff and find out. We usually try to offer it if if it's possible. It's always a question of uh, the staff availability for it. Yeah, we we you might be surprised by this, but we have their staff doing a lot more things than they normally do. So. Is there, a there is a specialty Indian lunch this year. It is happening. I want to say on Monday. And it is Wednesday, the other Monday. <laughs> and it is going to be amazing. We've seen the menu. But we also have, uh, by request, every day there will be an Indian dish available. Actually, there will be a meat dish, Indian dish, and a veggie Indian dish available. The, the, in the Indian, the Indian yeah. food is <laughs> Speaking of that, a uh, point I forgot to mention. Uh, there are Beyond Burgers and Beyond Sausages available throughout the ship. <laughs> Particularly in the main dining room and dive-in, but you should probably, if there's any confusion, ask for the vegetarian burger or the or vegetarian the vegan. dog. As as vegan, the, the vegan burger or vegan the burger. vegan hot vegan dog. Vegan burger or vegan dog is Beyond Beats. Uh, so those are, yes, the, you can read about the specialty Indian lunch and uh, I can't remember, is it a $10 charge? I don't remember, it's a slight, it's a small upcharge. You can speak to the maitre d' uh, or there's a number you can call to sign up for it. Um, and it's, and if you are a vegetarian or vegan, there is actually an entire menu that's available every night in the main dining room. Also, throughout the ship, there are options, and not just for vegetarian and vegan, but I know for some other dietary restrictions as well. Uh, and we, uh, the reason we have this special is the Indian lunch in particular is because a great uh, percentage of the kitchen, cooking, uh, and chef staff are Indian. 
uh, and, and the surrounding area. We like them to show off their, their uh, home cuisine, uh, and they really tend to do a great bang-up job with it. I mean, they do a great job with everything. Yeah, with everything, but they really, you know, they get a chance to shine particularly. Uh, We've still got a few minutes. Uh, any questions at all are welcomed. I was the taco bar, bar but no, unfortunately, there is no taco bar this year. Sort of. Well, there is a fajita station in the Lido, which has essentially all of the same ingredients, just behind a sneeze guard and another person serving it, so not everybody's hands are getting in it. That's our understanding is why the taco bar has been is not available, and they've been removing it from the ships that have had it. Is mostly for health. And in and general, they they have the health regulations that they have that they find. Uh, more ways to keep people safe and basically only having food in the, the food specific areas so they've been taking away things like that here and there but yes there will still be taco options and that said there is also new to us this year on this ship New York Pizza which is back up on the Lido deck on the back deck Pretty good. which is made to order pizza that is actually quite flavorful and good <laughs> unusual on a cruise ship yeah uh, down here but... Question is: Is there a charge for eating in dining venues, except uh, outside of the main dining room? Uh, there, there are a couple of upcharge restaurants. Um, the Pinnacle Grill, the Tamarind, and Canaletto are upcharges. But the Lido Marketplace uh, is not upcharge. The the grill that's by the pool is not upcharge. I think it's just those three that are upcharge. And also, if you do get the espresso. In on the 11th floor forward, uh, there is a charge for that, like there is for. And I believe also uh, at the dive in the milkshakes are for a small upcharge. But you should, you can call. Uh, and there's numbers in the your newsletters to call and make reservations for those restaurants. They are all quite excellent. We've eaten at all of them. Uh, we, we have we have the obligation to go on this cruise a couple of months before you guys take this cruise. So a couple of months back, Jonathan couldn't make it unfortunately, but Storm and Drew and I went, and we were forced to eat at all the restaurants. What a shame to have to eat at the Tamarind. That was a real... The things we do for you people. The horror! We are, I think, about to wrap up. But again, any other questions at all? We down Over there. here? Oh, it's one here and then up there. Um, if we have to leave tonight, should we be concerned about getting back in for the thing that happens right afterwards in the main street? Um, the question is, if uh, that, that's regarding clear, clearing the room. We do have to clear the room. Uh, but if, essentially, if you want to get right back in for the Adventure Zone um, and don't want to get shut out of it, we'll be making the call based on the judgment of the helper monkeys to see how big the lines are, essentially. The current plan is that we are going to clear the room at the end of our show. It's not going to be a super, like, it's not going to go right up until 10 o'clock or anything. There should be at least a half hour between the shows, so you should be able to get there and get in line in time enough for plenty of seating to be available. And then I think the last one's going to be up top. Where was it? Uh, there's one here, yeah. All right, I hope I don't waste this opportunity, but this is a question for Storm. In oh. today's uh, newsletter, where's the Sagittarius horoscope? Oh, you'll find the Sarah Sagittarius horoscope in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's the horoscope I was looking for right there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, well, thank you all. That's orientation. We will see you in here at 530 or depending on which team you're on. Have a wonderful cruise! Thank you.